So you want to raise money for a blockchain product. You may have an idea and you may want to start raising money, but you actually don't know where to start raising money. Well, I'm going to do a series of videos where I talk to you about raising money. In this very first one, I'm going to focus on grants. Um, my background is I worked at the Web3 Foundation on grants, so this is something that I know well. I'm going to say that this is like an unofficial video, which should be obvious because I no longer work at the Web3 Foundation. Hence the disclaimer at the bottom, it's an unofficial view. So to kind of put this into context, what are like the main phases of funding? There's three phases of funding as I see it. The first round is the funder kind of round for where you have your own funds, which is kind of the same as having a grant. It's, it's about the same. Later rounds will be private or public rounds where you can raise more money um, to, to really take your, your project to that next level. But in the very early phases, you're either going to be building with your own money or building with grant money. So what is the, the kind of the point? Why do you want to do it? The point is that you can get money without too much risk, without too much burden. If you build something, you'll get paid for building that. I know it sounds obvious, but you're, you don't have to commit to a huge product, a huge you know, uh, timeline. You can keep it quite defined and you'll get paid for everything that you deliver. It also helps you to establish reputation because you'll be getting this reputation as a builder. And if you are in, in, in the right direction, then you, know, you, you may be able to get a little bit of like marketing, say, through Web3 and Parity. And this will obviously build trust between you and your potential users, which is obviously a good thing. As I see here on this slide, you don't get enough funds to launch your product, but it's a good starting point. There are later rounds, obviously, as, as I said. Uh, I don't really want to talk too much about these later rounds because there could be some interesting stuff to cover there in the later videos. And yeah, I'm going to leave those for, for later. So here, here I'm kind of covering a little bit of what I just said there. The point, so the point of the grant is that you build something and you get the money. There, there isn't a lot of obligations there. As long as you deliver, you'll get it, roughly. It's non-dilutive, so there's no equity taken and there's no tokens taken. At least at Web3 Foundation, we didn't, we didn't buy any tokens. Other foundations might, but you know, that wasn't the case. So, so that means that you're getting money without diluting the capital base of, of you and your team. So that, that, you know, that is like you and your company uh, and you get to keep all of that while raising money, which typically if you're selling something to an investor, you have to give away some share of your company or some share of your tokens. It's probably obvious for most of you, but I thought it was worth pointing out. For the Web3 grants, the minimum was around about 10k. There wasn't really like an explicit minimum, but if it's less than 10k, maybe the idea is either too small or maybe it should just be a bounty. There's a max of 100k and that's per round. You can actually apply multiple times. So in theory, you could raise you know, multiples of 100k, but it's actually very rare to get approved at the 100k level. There's also the Polkadot and Kusama on-chain treasuries. I was never involved in these. I don't know a ton about them. I've read the documents. I will link you to the documents down below. I, I think they're very good options and I think you should strongly consider those as well. It's just that I can't say a great deal. The treasuries, you can apply to the treasury actually at any time. You could have launched your, your product already and you can still apply there. There's nothing to prevent you doing that. It's just that if you already have a token, kind of don't expect either the foundation or the treasuries to just give you more money when you've already got your own token because you, you've already probably raised a lot of money. Keep that in mind. The Polkadot treasury, obviously depending on the dot price, can be valued around 500 million. It's, it's a lot of dots, it's there to be used and essentially the users of Polkadot or Kusama vote upon it so it's like a DAO. So what are the main criteria for grants? 
these these are like the three main criteria as as I used to see in my head whenever I was doing the grants program. There's a maximum of 100k per project, although as I said, it's actually really per round rather than per, per project. There's a soft cap at 30k, and if you apply for 30k or below, it's very fast to get that approved. If you apply for more, then there's basically an extra step uh, of approval, and yeah, that can take you know days in in the shortest time or you know weeks because that's that's what happened. So 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 keep that in mind. If you can keep to thirty thousand or less, which is something of a sweet spot, then you can actually get approval very quickly. The pay is per milestone, so anything that you don't deliver, you don't get paid for, and that's kind of some. What I want to say, assurance on both sides that if you you know ask for a hundred thousand and you get approved, but you only deliver half or whatever, the foundation's only going to pay for half. So it, it makes sense. That's very good for, for risk management. Open source. Why does it need to be open source? You're building something for the community, not explicitly for yourselves. It should be available, therefore, on GitHub and have the appropriate license. I don't remember all of the license um, nuances off the top of my head. You can look them up. It's online. That's, this is a really important one to understand because there's a lot of projects that used to ask, can they make a closed source? And basically, no, it's a very strong criteria that, that we can't break. Anyway, uh, the very last one, which you I'm saying you would be surprised because you would be surprised, is that you have to be Polkadot or Substrate related. It is kind of obvious, but there was there was a ton of applications that came in where they just obviously haven't read the grants page and they still wanted the money. It's daft. It's a waste of time. It should be polka dot or substrate related. So then that that's like the you know the important details to get us started. Our next big one, something that was asked a lot is what should we build? Can you give us an idea? And to be honest, the best ideas are always ones that the building teams came up with. What are you passionate about? If you're passionate about something, you're going to want to build it and you're going to want to complete it because you're really passionate about it. Teams who were consultancy companies would maybe come to us, especially in the bear market, and kind of, you know, almost like beg for, 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 for money. You know, we really need money, we're struggling, something like this, we'll build whatever you want. But the thing is, the foundation didn't want necessarily any software to be built. It wasn't, it wasn't really like that. We're trying to build an ecosystem, so we want you to come with your idea and, and to build whatever and be sustainable for a long term. You're not, you're not building for us, you're building for the community. So that's where you have to get this mindset right, I, I think, from the beginning. So bring a crazy idea, and a lot of times we funded crazy ideas. That's just, that's just the nature of it. Obviously, if you're really, really struck, stuck, then have a look at previous examples. There are some good examples that, you know, if you see a good wallet, maybe you could also build a wallet. I say maybe because two wallets is fine for the ecosystem, but 10, you know, maybe not. In a year, then maybe it makes sense to have 100. I, I don't know. But right now, it doesn't really make sense to have 100 wallets, for example. There's also a tech stack page. This is within GitHub. And this is like the diagram here on the left side that kind of shows you where the different layers fit together within our tech stack, and it'll give you an idea of where you may want to focus. There are also example teams on, on that page. So if you look at, say, the wallets, there'll be a, a bunch of wallets listed, at least from what I remember. And then finally, you could reply to an RFP, which is a request for proposal. They're really quite infrequent. They don't come up that often, but they do tend to be larger projects. It's like the bridging, you know, huge costs, huge timelines, ones that we don't typically do in, in grants. Um, but because they're such a special project, we really needed to make sure that we get it done right. Those are, you know, they, they are they are a little bit painful because of all of the, you know, the level of detail that we had to go into. But for certain teams, it, it can make sense. I think, I think if you're really struggling for an idea, you're probably not at the stage of coming for a grant. If, if I'm honest, it's, it's probably too early. So how, how do you apply? Well, go to the, the Web3 Foundation website um, or, or just follow this link. Actually, this technically this link doesn't go to the website. It goes to the GitHub page. Go to the GitHub page, I should say, and, and read it and then read it again. Make sure you understand all of it. There are so many questions that used to come to me which were already on this GitHub page. And 
it gets a little bit kind of tiring to reply to the same questions over and over again when really pretty much all of the information is there on that page. So once you've got to that point, you've got a good idea, you're reading through the grants page, you've understood it, you want to make an application, then to write a good application, just look at what the previous teams have done, look at the good teams and copy them. You have a different idea, of course, so your milestones will be different, but the overall structure of the application is going to be more or less the same. You will fork the repo, uh, you will fill out the template file, and you then make a pull request whenever you want to apply. That's broadly the how it works. Read the grants page for any sort of nuances. Don't forget to include the documentation because just delivering code without any documentation is kind of a waste of time and it's not really good good value for the ecosystem. So that, that's one thing that we really, really push. You, you have to provide documentation with your code. Finally here on, on this page, Yes, it's easy to get funded, but you should have a reasonable funding level. State what the number of employees is that will be working on the project and their cost per day. Now, you, you might think, oh, you know, you could just make up any number and we wouldn't know. Well, the thing is we did know because we've seen so many teams that once you've done like 100 applications, you get a, a very good impression for what's cheap and what's expensive. And if, and if you're tr trying to, you know, to say that your team is all based in San Francisco or should get paid San Francisco prices yet you live in like the cheapest part of the world, it just generally can't be done. And generally we didn't fund teams in San Francisco because they were too expensive. Some were funded in Switzerland. Um, it did happen, but also Switzerland also tends to be quite expensive. So this is also something to, to keep in, in, in mind is that don't make it too expensive. The, the point of the grants program is not just to get the funding. There's also the sort of the softer, intangible benefits as well. One of the most annoying applications gave me some very short sentence of what they were building and wanted like $500,000. You know, that's really, you know, unfortunately a waste of time because they, you didn't actually read the grant criteria. I, I can't change, or when I was there, I couldn't change the grant criteria. They were set by the Foundation Council. So 100K was the max. It had to be open source. There was no way to get around that. So again, that's why read the page, apply for a sensible number and make it fair. And then it's really easy to get approved. The smarter teams knew that and the smarter teams got themselves approved and they just got on with life and they got on with building. Here's some links. Um, yeah, it's difficult to click these links when they're in a video, so I will put them into the video description. The first one is for the grants program itself at Web3. The second is for the Polkadot Treasury. I don't know a ton about it, but you know maybe you can figure it out. It's also worth mentioning that there are other grants programs within, within and around the Polkadot ecosystem. I don't know if these are good, and I'm going to assume that they are reasonably good. Uh, I don't know what their criteria are. It might be similar or different to, to what we had at Web3. Uh, but if, if you structure your milestones correct, there might be a way to get a grant from Web3 and then from one of these other teams. But it may not make sense to apply to Web3 if, if your product is more in line with one of these programs. Like if you're building on Moonbeam, then maybe just apply there and just skip Web3. So, some, something to keep in mind. And lastly, uh, as I see in all of my videos, and maybe you're sick of hearing this now, but I want to encourage everyone to sign up to Polkadot Market. We have a Discord and we have a Reddit. We do tend to talk around about like prices, price action, whether valuations we think are fair. So this is kind of leading us back to this idea of you know fundraising and valuations. It all, kind of, it all comes together. If a team is has fundraised and you know there's say like a a coin telegraph or a coin desk article then we are also happy to share it within the reddit so it's a little bit of marketing for teams who are building the people there obviously are you know of of more of that investor trader mindset that's what i want to say and if you're watching this video then maybe you've already got that sort of mindset but the video is obviously more for for builders in later videos i'm going to talk about the other funding rounds but those are for other videos and i want to just thank you for watching this and yeah, see you in the next video. Thanks very much.